Hi, everybody. So I will talk today about the cognitive and the flexible execution layer uh, and the orchestrator. So these are three of uh, the uh, core components of the um, Rossini toolkit, as Ricardo perfectly explained at the beginning of this webinar. So uh, this is a, 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 um, a, a, a part of the overall Rossini architecture that focuses on the interconnection between the orchestrator, the cognitive layer and the flexible execution layer. So at the bottom, we have the meta sensor for the Rossini architecture, which is the semantic map that taking information from uh, sensors uh, from the position of the human and from safety uh, by the RS4, uh, it uh, builds uh, a representation of the world that will be the main uh, input for the cognitive layer. The cognitive layer is basically the layer responsible for dispatching uh, tasks uh, between the human and the robot and takes as an input the job description and the job quality indicators that we want uh, to exploit for uh, um, maximizing the quality of the job and it takes as an input uh, the output of the orchestrator. The, orch the orchestrator itself is basically uh, an object that coordinates the communication media the human can exploit for interacting with the robot. So the human can talk uh, with the cognitive layer, as we will see later, uh, through several means, uh, mic, uh, graphical user interface, uh, whatever, basically, and the orchestrator will transform this in a message for the cognitive layer. The cognitive layer outputs a, a set of tasks for the robot, uh, and these tasks uh, are physically executed through the flexible execution layer that plan the motion and the, several, and the actions that the robot has to do. So let's try to describe quickly each of these ingredients, okay? So let's start from the cognitive layer. The cognitive layer is basically made up uh, uh, by two tasks, two, two blocks, the task assignment and the dynamic scheduler. The task assignment takes uh, uh, the description of the job and it splits it into a set of tasks. And as I said a few minutes ago, it, dis it distributes these tasks among the human and the robot according to a set of metrics that uh, evaluate if a task can be done by the human, if a task can be done only by the robot or only by the human, and uh, it evaluates how good are humans and robots to execute a specific task. And then this, this dispatching is made uh, based on nominal information. I know that the human takes uh, I don't know, 10 seconds for doing uh, task one and 20 seconds for doing task two. And of course, this information is a nominal information, but as we all know, there, there is no nominal human. Each of us is different. So I may take 12 seconds, I may take 30 seconds, I may take two seconds. So this nominal information so uh, are used for building a task list that is sent to the dynamic scheduler. The dynamic scheduler takes as an input uh, a human, uh, the, the, the real monitoring of the human. So there is a, uh, through a sensing system, it's possible to evaluate online through an algorithm we have exploited and integrated in the Rossini cognitive layer, uh, how much time the human is really taking for executing the task. And the dynamic scheduler dynamically changes the order of the tasks and it can even assign one of the tasks nominally assigned to the robot back to the human or a task assigned to the human to the robot uh, based on what is really happening uh, to, to, to what is really happening in the scene. Okay, so the output of the scheduler is a sequence of tasks to be sent to the human and to the robot and the sequence is dynamic. Okay. So this is, yeah, just to give you an idea on, on how we solve the task assignment problem. It looks uh, a nasty problem. It's, it's of course an optimization problem because we want to optimize. I don't want to go into the math. I just want to, to show you basically the structure. Basically, uh, we want to ensure precedence constraints are satisfied. So if, uh, uh, I don't know, I, I, I have, I have to place uh, a screw before taking the screwdriver, for example, and not the other way around. Okay, and these final constraints are the job quality constraints that we integrate with the help of TNO in order to ensure that the job the human is executing so always satisfies a desired set of uh, a certain level of quality, basically. So 
The task assignment uses weights for understanding what has to be given to the human, what has to be given to the robot. It minimizes uh, the effort and the cycle time, and it ensures the maximum effort over the entire work shift, and it provides a nominal schedule. And the dynamic cell scheduler introduces in a human robot collaboration cell, which is super, super dynamic, the awareness. So, Given the awareness on how much time the human really takes for executing the task, it reschedules the activities in order to maximize, uh, to maximize the efficiency of the overall procedure while preserving a certain level of job quality. And of course, the human can communicate with the robot because, for example, I may be very skilled in executing a certain task that is nominally assigned to the robot. And I want to tell the scheduler, hey, I want to do that. And the scheduler rearranges all the tasks in order to provide me with the task I want to execute. OK, so this is a simple example for showing you what's happening. I hope here it comes. So this is the nominal schedule of a job. This is Andrea, actually the one that developed most of this. OK, so the robot is executing this nominal task. And at a certain point. This is the algorithm I was mentioning to you that is estimates, estimates the real time expected for executing a task on behalf of the human. And since uh, it seems that Andrea is a little late with respect to the nominal time. Well, the dynamic scheduler schedules another task for the human and for the robot. Okay, so the robot can move ahead and take one of the tasks. Okay, for the sake of time, we'll move forward. I'll be happy to show you the rest of the video later if you're interested. Okay, so once uh, once uh, uh, the tasks are assigned to the human, to the robot, sorry, it's important that the robot plans a trajectory uh, for executing them. And this is the role of the flexible execution layer that takes care of uh, uh, planning the best dynamic trajectory. Again, dynamic because in the robotic workspace, there is a very dynamic object, which is a human. OK, so we need to take care about the human to consider safety constraints and we use speed and separation monitoring for that. For that. So again, the flexible execution layer is made up of a couple of main blocks, trajectory planning and trajectory scaling. The trajectory planning, given the information about the world provided by the semantic scene map, uh, plans the best trajectory online uh, for understanding, uh, for, 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 for achieving its job. And given the information coming from the RS4, the trajectory scaling tries to um, try to adapt the velocity of uh, the robot, uh, the, the velocity by means of which the robot follows the trajectory in order to meet the constraints uh, given by the ISO 15066, so for uh, achieving uh, a safe motion. Of course, it may happen that in order to achieve a safe motion, we need to go too slow and you can set a threshold. And when the, when the robot keeps on following the desired trajectory with a, a good speed for speed and separation monitoring, but we understand that, hey, the, the trajectory I planned a while ago is not good enough. So maybe it's better to replan the trajectory in order to achieve better performance. OK, so. It's an integration between velocity scaling for ensuring safety and replanning when needed in order to ensure optimality. Again, one of the goals is always uh, efficiency. The main goal, actually. So, few information about the trajectory planning. For those of you who are familiar with that, we uh, we have used the RRT Connect algorithm, which is. Uh, super cool and super fast and uh, we have exploited path velocity composition for um, controlling the velocity by means of which uh, the robot tracks the desired trajectory and we have integrated uh, the uh, ISO 15066 uh, uh, regulations in order to uh, find the best velocity and again all in all uh, we have built another optimization problem, which is convex uh, for those of you uh, who are familiar with that, which means that it, it looks nasty, but it can be solved in milliseconds. OK, and so it can be we have implemented it in real time. So well, the, the algorithm has been solved in real time. OK, so again, short 
video for showing you how it works. So this is the robot planning its trajectory. So we did these experiments on the Pilz robot, which is in our lab currently, thanks to the Pilz. So Andrea comes in and the robot sees Andrea and it reduces the speed scaling, the speed the trajectory is tracked with. And again, okay, it takes too much time. Why not replanning? It seems that Andrea is staying. And you see, it stays too much on the, on the same position. And I want to conclude by introducing the orchestrator. The orchestrator is uh, this nasty guy. Okay, basically it's a ROS interface for uh, all the um, all the um, interaction devices we have used in Rosin in uh, one of the use cases. So we have the projector, the screen, the microphone, the speaker, and so on and so forth. And all these devices are integrated with a standard uh, ROS interface that allows to integrate any device with uh, ROS and uh, ROS. And the information coming from these devices is uh, uh, arrives to the arbiter. The arbiter is nothing else than um, a strategy, arbitrary status, arbitrary strategy that you can choose for um, for handling priorities between the device. Maybe you want the projector to have a higher priority with respect to the speaker or whatever. So it's really application dependent. And uh, it uh, dispatches the information to the dynamic scheduler, to the robot, or to the RS4. Okay, so this is basically it. So again, for the sake of time, I don't want to go too much into detail. Again, I'll be happy to talk with you about this later. And this is it. So uh, I hope I was clear, and I'll be glad to take any questions. <laughs>